Hello everyone. Today we will learn lecture three, Huawei VRP basics. VRP means versatile routing platform. It's a versatile platform to manage the routers and other devices. Today's lecture will be divided into two parts. The first part is for VRP overview. We will learn the overview of VRP and how to manage devices. The second part is command line basics. We will introduce some basics for command line. So first of all, what is VRP? VRP is a universal operating system platform for Huawei Datacom products. So uh, VRP can be an OS platform for some route routers, for switches, and for other devices. The main functions VRP provides are as follows. First, it provides a unified user interface and a unified management interface. So although there are a lot of different device, Huawei devices, we can all use VRP as the unified interface to manage the devices. Second, VRP can implement the functions of the control plane and defines the interface specifications of the forwarding plane. Second, a uh, third, um, the VRP can implement communication between the device forwarding plane and uh, control plane. So they provide the interface between these two layers. This is the evolutionary of VRP. Actually, VRP1 uh, first developed 20 years ago. Uh, at that time, that is a centralized design and only lim used for limited number of devices and limited uh, functions. Then the VRP2 becomes a distributed design. And then for VRP3, um, it becomes a platform which can support a lot of different various features. And then for VRP5, they can support the component-based design, and they can support a lot of different devices. And the performance of VRP5 is much higher than the previous version. Now we can use this VRP8. So for VRP8, they can support multi-process. They can support multi-CPU and multi-chases. And um, VRP8 is also a component-based device. Now let's introduce the file system of the VRP. So there are actually several different types of files. First, for any device, they should have the system software, uh, much similar as the Windows system, the Linux system in the PC, right? So for a uh, router or a switch, they should also have a sy system software. And that system software is a must for startup, for operation, and to provide the uh, management for a device. Then the type two is configuration file. We need to configure the device to work on several different uh, setups. So to store these different setup, we use this configuration file. And we also have this patch file. Patch file, actually, you can think of that the up, upgrade or update of the software. Um, that is a patch that is compatible with the software, the system software, and they can fix some bugs or give some update. And finally, we also have this PAF file. You can think of this PAF file as the um, control file to control the product feature and resource. We can manage these files using the remote login or using the command line. When you access the device, you can manage these files. And where does these files stored in? Actually, they are stored in various different media. For example, for computers, we have main memory. For devices, we also have main memory. That is uh, called SDRAM, the synchronous dynamic random access memory. So this SDRAM actually is versatile. So if the, the power is turned off, then the data in the SDRAM is lost. 
if we want to store some data which should not be lost when the power is turned off, we need to use this non-versatile RAM. Okay, and also the flash and SD card are all non-versatile storage. So actually, um, typically the system startup files are stored in the SD card or in the flash. And then uh, after the system startup, the some uh, real-time files or real-time data are generated or written in this SD-RAM. Non-volatile RAMs are used to write the logs um, because the RAM is non-volatile, so the logs can be write into this uh, NVRAM, which will not be uh, lost uh, if the power is off. And the logs, if we directly write the logs into Flash, it will be very time consuming. So we will write the logs into buffer. And when the buffer is full, uh, finally to write them into the NVRAM or the Flash. Finally, we also have this uh, USB. Actually, um, this SD card is kind of portable storage, right? You can use these uh, engineers can use the files in the SD card to update or upgrade the system. So the patch files are usually put in the SD card. Similarly, USB can also provide an interface for the uh, large capacity storage medium, which is portable. You can also put the patch files or other uh, files into this USB uh, storage. So after introducing the file system and also the storage system, we can know uh, how a device is set up. So that is the initialization process. After a device is powered on, first the boot room software is run to initialize the hardware. So the hardware should first start uh, to work. And then they can also display some hardware parameters for you to configure. And then they can run the system software and reach the configuration file from the default storage path to perform initialization. So first set up the hardware and then run the system software and then to configure the device.